go on about it. I'm going to ask you some sensitive question. Um, did you ever think or did you ever feel politics play a role in your places? You can talk free right now because she don't own anybody. Any <laughs> explanation? So <laughs> I, I think a lot. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back with another video. And today we're discussing Roly Winkler. Has he retired from professional bodybuilding? Has he been forced to retire? Um, I go into all of that and discuss Roly Winkler and basically where he's at in his career now. He's in a recent interview with William Bonac. It's a great interview. The link to that full interview is in the description below as well. And we get into basically why Roly Winkler is making his retirement from bodybuilding. Is there a chance of him coming back at any stage? And was it due to his shoulder injury, which he was obviously out with um, uh, from competitive bodybuilding? So he hasn't competed in a couple of years now. And when he last competed, he definitely wasn't at his best. But let's get into this podcast and what he had to say on William Bonnack's latest podcast. Plus, he goes into politics and if he thinks politics were involved in his placings. So let's get into that one now in my shoulder but that's why okay. uh, that's my injury so okay so that was your injury and did you went through surgery for it already yes i did it already uh like six seven weeks ago i did it in brazil okay i find, I find somebody that is uh experienced in it and he was see the problem everything Mm -hmm. Because I, I do was to um, I go I go to a lot of doctors that don't believe it and to do it and this doctor won't believe it. Um, the so what Roly actually said before this part in the interview is basically that he explained his injury. So it's basically his bicep tendon that connects to the front of the shoulder. He said that was loose. I don't know if it was loose or not, or maybe it was too tight and actually pulling his shoulder forward. Because a lot of the time when you get that internal rotation of the shoulder and it pulls the shoulder forward, you get this sort of bone on bone. And he actually goes on to say, or maybe he said a little bit before, he's actually wearing the bone away. So he's having a huge amount of shoulder pain and now he's not in pain. So let's listen on. Most important thing is my pain mm. is away. Okay. The most, pain, most pain what I got is when you sleep, mm -hmm. it was it was hurting me, and, and the pain is. Gone. And what about when you were training? During the training, did you have any issues with it before you did the surgery? No, I I I, I can't even train. That's yeah. why I'm. That's now I exactly I don't train like more than one year. I don't train anymore, yeah. and, and okay. now. The movement is better mm. and the pain is gone, but okay. still I can't train heavy. So obviously he said he still can't train heavy and, you know, but I think he means ongoing he can't actually train heavy. So could Rory Winkler make a comeback to the bodybuilding stage? I don't think he'd ever be at his best at this point. Now, when he last competed, he said he hasn't trained over a year now. Uh, which is crazy whether he's trained some legs or done a little bit here and there, maybe a little bit of arms or something like that. But the fact that he hasn't done that, everyone noticed that Roller Winkler downsized a huge amount. And obviously, if you're in a huge amount of pain, and I, I'm assuming those last contests that he actually did, he's probably in a huge amount of pain doing those. He wasn't bringing his best in terms of conditioning, but he was still enormous. I think Roller Winkler has the genetics that if he actually went back to training lightly, he'd be able to make a comeback to the bodybuilding stage and maintain or gain uh, will get back to a similar amount of muscle that he had. And he was such a freak that if he just nailed in the conditioning and kept that waist really small, then I think he could place much higher than bringing the extra size and coming in slightly out of condition. Okay. So uh, a lot of people are asking you, um, are you planning to compete? <laughs> I know the answer, but <laughs> you never know. No. You never know. You know, Dexter is, was 50 no, when he no. started bodybuilding, right? So... I know about compete, but um, what I hope is I just want to train. I and just want to train or anybody train. I, I don't go heavy anymore, but just mm. train. It's for me, I'm portable, and you never know what the future can give you, you know? True. So, and so Roly has not ruled out a comeback at some point. Now that Masters Olympia is around, I think that that would be great for Roly Winkler if he does decide to compete again, because I believe Roly's about 45 years of age now, so he could even fit into it when they have a 45 plus. So, you know, 
going, you know, one year, two years down the track or whatever, if Roll is able to gain some of that size back if he wants to with his health, because he does state his health in this as well. He doesn't say there's any particular problems, but he wants to look after his health and he wants that longevity as well. So that's um, great news. But I think he could honestly make a comeback to that Masters Olympia stage and probably do pretty well as well, as you guys think in the comments as well, while really saying Masters Mr. O. All right, let's get back into this. How how your, So talking about that, how's your physical and mental health going, you know, especially after the injury and downsizing. Because when I saw you the first time, you know, at the airport, I was like, bro, you look so healthy, your face, you look like 10, 20 years younger than you were, you know? So it, it like, it, you can see the difference, you understand, between you now and you, you know, during your uh, competitive uh, season. You know, it, 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 is, it is very hard for me exactly to hear that exactly every day yeah but and it was it it, it 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 is it is it is painful but what you can do about it you know nothing nothing but i think I... it's actually it's one of those things you don't think about too much being younger but once you get to that age you know your best is behind you you know you can train as hard as you want and be you know as good as you can on a plan but you're probably never going to look as good as you looked when you were third place in Mr. Olympia back in what year was it? 2019. I think it was when they had the first people's champ award. So that's got to be something hard to mentally deal with. And, and Rolly is saying it, it's, it's tough. You shouldn't even want to do something about it because this is you. You understand? This is, this is you, you know, so, and this is the healthy side of you. And what do you prefer? You get me, you have your, you know, your, your competitive years, you know, that you look like a beast, a monster, you know, and now that's behind. So William Bonac is really like throughout this as well. He's being actually a really good friend. And he mentions at the start that he's best friends with Roly Winkler, which I think is amazingly cool. And the reason why he actually got into bodybuilding is, well, part of his motivation was he wanted to look like Roly. And you think of these guys, you know, sort of coming up at the same time, but William Bonac was a little bit behind Roly Winkler and started later in his career. But I think that's really cool. And William Bonac really displays that he's such a good friend. But something else that Roly Winkler gets onto in this interview as well is politics in bodybuilding. And Rolly has some strong words. Now he's finished competing, he speaks very openly. And I'm going to give my opinion on it. Was Rolly Winkler, I suppose, screwed, ripped off, whatever you want to say, during his bodybuilding career due to politics? Let's listen to what Rolly Winkler has to say when William Bonac asks him that question. Going about that, I'm going to ask you some sensitive question. Um, did you ever think or did you ever feel politics play a role in your placings? You can talk free right now because she don't own anybody <laughs> any explanation so <laughs> I, I think a lot you know but that's the that's the thing you know um they do it a lot with me and mm. what what i do is still laughing smile yeah what you can do nothing yeah? nothing you can do nothing and, and if you be angry your place be worse just yeah, stay true. like it. stay true. laughing now, I don't know too many times um, during his career, I'll pop this up while I talk about this, where Roly Winkler was actually potentially, I suppose, slighted, wronged, or anything like that during his competitive career. I mean, coming to mind, there's a show here or there where he could have placed one, two spots higher, but there wasn't anywhere I was incredibly, I suppose, discouraged at that he placed so high considering. But I did put a poll up on the desktop bodybuilding uh, live right now, if you are watching live, if you are watching on re replay, just let me know in the comments. And basically 69% of you said do, uh, to the question, yes, um, you said, do you think Roller Winkler should have placed higher during his career? 69% say yes, 31% say no. So interesting poll results there, but Roly is one of those guys where I was always a huge fan of him. Now his waist did start to get thicker when he last competed. I wasn't the biggest fan of him bringing that ultra huge size where it just sort of, I suppose, superseded everything. But I mean, <laughs> he's still, you know, you look at that, the waist is small there. When he came back to that Arnold Classic and Arnold made those comments about Roller Winkler and uh, really everyone about the midsection and he wasn't really controlling it. He just went into control in that midsection and really brought, brought a very improved, impressive physique. And I remember when he actually came and made that big statement at the Olympia, I believe, believe he placed seventh. That's one show where I think he sh should have placed higher, but there's no egregious 
uh, placings, but let me know in the comments if there's any shows in particular where you think Rolly should have placed higher. But I think just some shows, there's just a lack of a tiny bit of polish and a few other things like that. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on that. But let's look at his career and his placings before we get to our other bodybuilding news where we've got updates from Quentin Raya, Hunter Labrada, Keon Pearson, Regan Grimes, and others as well. But Really, he had a great career when you look at it. 2005, the World Amateur Championships. That was actually where Dennis Wolf turned pro, and he was actually natural at the time. 2009, Arnold Amateur, he won the overall. So this was only his third competition in 2005, and I'll zoom in on these a little bit for you guys as well so we can see it a little bit closer. Um, and then he goes on the next year to play seventh in the Arnold Classic, goes on to the Olympia, places 14th. 2011, places eighth, uh, does a bunch of other shows, almost gets a pro win. The following year, he wins the Nordic Pro, gets his first IFB Pro victory, places 12th in the Olympia and third in the Arnold Classic in Europe. Some good placings there. And then 2013, he goes on to win the Chicago Pro um, does the Olympia and places seventh. Now, I believe that was where he really made his big impact, I think it was, or maybe it was the following year. I can't quite remember, but no, it was definitely that year. And then the next year, he must have came in off. He placed 12th, and then he goes on to have a pretty successful 2015, placed seventh in the Olympia again. And then from there, he basically improved. Sixth in the Olympia 2016, uh, sixth in the Olympia 2017, third in the Olympia in 2018, that was the year I was thinking of, not 2019, and then fifth in the Olympia in 2019. So what a career for Rolly. Oh, actually, his real name is Egg Burton, I believe, um, Winkler. So anyway, let's move on. Let's discuss some of these other bodybuilding stories. And one guy I've been incredibly impressed with lately, and that's Quentin Araya. Um, for some reason, it's not showing. Oh, there we go. It is showing on the screen right now. Quentin Araya, this is a decent shot. Apparently, he's 350 pounds, according to his coach, Matt Jansen, as I mentioned on a recent video. Um, uh, was in a decent spot to start last year's prep. Oh, that's actually an old photo. He looks incredibly impressive there. Um, but where's his new shots? Because he's been looking absolutely crazy. I don't know if he has posted up his new shots. Oh, here we go. This is the one. I actually featured this one already. I assume that other one was a new one. But yeah, now looking at it. He definitely looks incredibly muscular here. And um, yeah, somewhere it says, Matt Jansen says, too fitty on that one. So Quentin or I looking crazy, but nothing actually new compared to the other day. Sorry, guys. And then Hunter Labrada has some updates lately. And look at him here. Uh, this year is about making myself proud. So he's got a little video here of him doing some posing. And there's some other videos of him doing some posing as well. I don't want to wait all day for this one. Um, but you can see him here. This is epic. Um, so he's out in Jordan at the moment. They're traveling, but you can see the way he's looking. He's looking incredible. Um, and it's cool that a guy like this, you know, I think mentally it's hard for bodybuilders to take that mental break, but he stays on it uh, year round and he's obviously working while on holiday and it probably helps having a partner as well, Liv Roth, who's an IFB pro. And uh, let's have a look here as well. You can see this physique update. So he's 285 pounds fasted. And you got to say that Hunter has made a real focus of looking after his midsection this year. And it looks like he's achieving that. I mean, the midsection looks very, very tight in his offseason. And that's going to be a key for Hunter going forward. If he can maintain that and continue to make improvements to his physique and not having to blow out the midsection, then I think that will only help his placings. And that was a major issue. And he did um, obviously address that. So congrats to Hunter. And I hope we see an all-time best Hunter this year on the Olympia stage. Now, Keon Pearson, he's put up an update just recently. He's actually put up quite a few. Actually, perhaps the one I'm thinking of also didn't show up on here, but he has been looking absolutely crazy. Let's see if he's got anything up on his story right now. But maybe it was on his story. I didn't send it to myself, but he's doing a side chest and he looks absolutely ridiculous. But you can see here, he's working on his weaknesses, trying to bring up those hamstrings, post-hammy pump. The goal is to bring the entire... A whole new entire physique this year, and we will do that. So Keon has some confidence. When he had confidence leading into the Olympia, we saw what Keon Pearson brought. Now, this was from a week ago, looking absolutely ridiculous. Very, very big, very, very round. And I think we're going to see a very good Keon Pearson, and I believe he can win the 212 Olympia this year. Now, another guy, Regan Grimes. Also, guys, leave your comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you are watching live, and if you are watching on replay, do the same as well. Now, Regan has posted up this one looking huge. Now, he always does look big in this pose, but this looks 
particularly impressive. And I think we need to see an all-time biggest Regan Grimes to continue to improve, to continue to build, build that maturity to his muscle. So it just shows up harder, shows up bigger, and that's how Regan Grimes moves forward. And I think it's more of a conditioning from the front than the back, almost like a Martin Fitzwater sort of thing that he has going on a little bit where he looks sharper from the back and from the front, he just needs to crispen up a little bit more, maybe get those biceps a little bit bigger. And I think he'll do very, very well. And another guy, a friend of mine, Aaron Polite, he's making his comeback to the stage this year in the 212. Last time he competed, he was ninth place in the Mr. Olympia. People should not forget that. It was one spot ahead of Angel Frias Calderon, who just finished second at the 212 Olympia. But obviously, Aaron hasn't been on stage. But this is sort of in his a bit of a comeback. This is four weeks ago, and he's continuing to train and look huge. So I can't wait to see Aaron come back on stage. And he's one of these guys, if he has a good run at it, he can literally go to the point where he could potentially win the 212 Olympian. I've said that to him privately and publicly. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on Aaron Polites. I'll try to find a photo of him on stage here. This is him backstage at the 212 Olympian. You can see he was absolutely cut from stone. He's actually working with Patrick Tour at the time as well. That was 2019, I believe. That's him on the Olympia stage. It was the year Kamal Elgarni won the 212 Olympia. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Roller Winkler. And I'm going to get to a few of your questions. So let me know your questions in the comments right now, and I'll get to them. Goat Fitness, first guy that I see come up. Yo, everybody likes the stream. Man, thank you so much. You put a lol at the end, so I'm wondering if everyone did like the stream. <laughs> um, here we go. Uh, Santino, uh, you said, I firmly believe it's absolutely not time to retire. Yeah, well, he is getting older. I mean, depending on the shoulder pain, when you are in a lot of pain, I've had, I've got some back pain actually currently at the moment, it's hurting sitting here. So I feel uh, Rolly's pain on that one. Um, then the governor, 2290, said if he had a better coach, that could really peak him. Uh, he could have definitely won at least one Mr. Olympia. I mean, there's a debate for that because conditioning was an issue, but there are guys out there that continually have conditioning issues regardless of what coach they work with. So let's not put it all... On the coach necessarily, but I'd love to see him work with a, with a um like a honey ram board or someone like that. It'd be very very cool. Mister Rhodes, Roll Winkle, the people's Mister Olympia. We miss you. We love you. You are our champion. Yeah, he here. Oh, really? Says three fifty. Yeah, and then we've got Ali Lama uh, says Quinton is on track to take over. He's Brandon Curry with great legs and the ability to get detailed and separated. Now, if you are just joining into this stream now, I've answered the list of questions. I've gone through all this bodybuilding news and basically featured why Roly Winkler is retiring from a, 20, uh, from a 2023 Mr. Olympia from bodybuilding and uh, basically discuss whether he'll make a comeback or not. So if you are joining live now, go back, watch the start of this video. If you do appreciate this content, guys, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills here at Desktop Bodybuilding. And uh, yeah, check out the Desktop Bodybuilding page because uh, I'll bring it up right now on the screen so you guys can see it and see what sort of programming we have going on right now. Obviously live at the moment, as you guys can see, that's a video you're watching, but we've got a ton of videos. This one here, 51K views, better or worse, Nick Walker, 2022 Olympia versus 2023 uh, Arnold Classic. We've got uh, same with Samson Dowder. We've got uh, Nick Walker versus Samson versus Andrew. All that sort of 2023 Arnold Classic coverage. And then you go down, you've got all the bodybuilding news lives, which is what this is. They're all here right now. Um, you can also go down to the Who's Wins, which is what I was telling you about before. Bodybuilding University, which will be back soon. Popular videos, YouTube Shorts, which I'm going to be doing a ton more of, plus much more. So make sure you guys check that out as well. And uh, we've got Christopher Cormier. He says, this true. Uh, Chris, you'll have to go back and watch the start of the video. But uh, yeah, it, it appears to be true based off the most recent interview. Um with uh, William Bonac on his channel. So breaking news here at Desktop Bodybuilding, but any, or breaking news really on William Bonac's channel and uh, first reported here outside of that, I believe on Desktop Bodybuilding. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding. So for myself, Xavier Wills, Desktop Bodybuilding. Also check out the video, check out Roly Winkler's YouTube channel because he mentions that in the interview as well. Um, so check all that out all on YouTube after you watch this video or check out in one of my other shoulder. videos. Oops. But that's why. <laughs> Let that run too long. But anyway, guys, for Xavier Wheels, Desktop Bodybuilding, we are...
out.